My name is Jeff Sams. I play Alvin Kelby in uh, Story of My Life. I just finished dividing the, sta the estate here at uh, the Guild, and I was also here last season in The Boys Next Door. So I'm excited to be back. It's a, it's a great show. Yes, I'm And excited to work with Scott. He's, uh, he's very talented, and the two of us could work out every night. Write what you know, Tom. Write what you know. We met in first grade We were friends for years Good friends, inseparable That much I know That much I know I'm Deborah Kent I am on the board of directors at the Dayton Theatre Guild. I've directed uh, other shows at the Guild, A Case of Libel and Ravenscroft. Um, I'm not a big musical uh, person, but I fell in love with the show when I saw an excerpt two years ago at Okta, in, uh, which is Ohio Community Theatre Association, in Columbus. And it was such an incredible excerpt that I, I fell in love with the story, and I've wanted to do it ever since. This is our first grade teacher in elementary school, a bad place, but our single most disturbing feature was the coarse black hair on her face. Maybe she was menopausal, lack of estrogen, will cause a lot of odd conditions, some acute. The irony would never face her namesake of a famous razor, and to be so facially hair So um, she, of course, is directing Story of My Life. And when, uh, when we were about to wrap uh, Blue Moon Dancing, she had brought me the soundtrack for, for, the, for the show. And so I've had it since December. Uh, before that, I hadn't heard about it. But I did some research, found out that it had a short run on Broadway, uh, and then went on to have a lot of regional success. Um, not so much on Broadway because it's such a small show, it's such a simple show. And you go up against shows like uh, you know, Phantom of the Opera or Cats or... Uh, producers. Book of Mormons, producers. I mean, any of these big, glitzy shows, it just uh, it really didn't fit that mold. I, I was actually working on dividing the estate at the time, and uh, I had a conversation with Deborah uh, about the show, and, and I said that I would be interested in doing it. Um, because uh, I was interested in doing another musical and in, um, in hearing the soundtrack, I, I was really interested in the story and, and what, what, what the playwrights had, had done with this two-person show. And uh, she heard me sing and, and I was a good fit. And the two of us you know, sang together um, just once and uh, Deborah and Renee kind of looked at each other and said, oh yeah, these two will work great. They're doing well. They, uh, they have a lot to do in the show. A lot of lines, a lot of singing, 
and there are only two of them up there. So, um, but yeah, and I think they went into this thinking it'd be a lot of fun and some hard work. And then later they said, well, it's some fun and a lot of hard work, mm. but they've put it all together now and it's, it's really, really going to be a great show. But well, we stand up straight looking shy and meek. And we stand up straight looking shy and meek. And we humbly wait for the storm to speak. And we humbly wait for the storm to speak. Soon we will hear the answer that we're preparing to receive. We have a lot of different we have a lot of eyes on us right. every night. We have we have a lot of very good directors feeding us information and, and, uh, and input. I'm very fortunate to have Renee Frank Reed. She is our musical director. She gives voice lessons and teaches voice for a living, and she's been doing this a long time. She's very good at it. Uh, Ramon Rougier and Becky Childs. We have dual accompanists. Um, because it's, it was such a, a long schedule that neither one was free the whole time, but they both have worked together before. And uh, so to have all three of them, and the three of them have worked together before, so it's, it's really neat to watch them work with the guys. Uh, Deborah is great because she sees this from an actor's standpoint, and Renee sees this from a musical standpoint, and you put those two together, and it, it has really worked into a very nice mix. And uh, Ramon and Becky have been terrific. Uh, they can play anything and they make us sound very good every night. I think Renee is fantastic. Uh, she knows her stuff and uh, Deborah, of course, has been doing plays for a long time and uh, Deborah will admit, openly admit, that she's not much of a musical person so it's interesting to bring that up because yeah. she does very much see this in the way that the playwrights actually you know, describe it is it's a straight play with music. Now that's a story. Tell them that one and you'll have it in the palm of your hand. That's not the story. What are you doing? When was the instant it's lettered and cracked? Skip right ahead to the big one. Are you sure you're ready for it? What are you talking about? Uh, where is it? You think it'd be a cinch to find it happened only last week. Ah, oh, you've tucked this one away good. God's Great Library, a story about Alvin and Thomas. I think the script is can be deceivingly simple uh, because you you assume it's a simple story about a friend going and telling the you know a story about his relationship with this other man but there is a lot underneath the surface that we have we have discovered this is ridiculous Al we're starting high school in the fall and you don't seem prepared for that at all when everything is different and the kids are mostly new Like you. One thing that occurs to me, and like Jeff said, there's, there's several different uh, aspects of the show that you can come away with after seeing it. And the way I describe it to a lot of my friends is that uh, you have you have Thomas who uh, is struggling to figure out what he has or has not done in terms of what happens to uh, what happens to Alvin. What is the moment? What is the story? Use your own words, Tom. I, I think if there was one, if you had to have a villain or a bad guy in the show, it would be Thomas. It would definitely be Thomas. It wouldn't be Alvin. But I also think that Thomas is probably the one character that most people would be able to associate with in terms of getting busy with life and letting, uh, you know, friendships dissolve. We need to keep those people in our lives that, that mean things to us. You know, keep, keep, keep up with those important relationships. And it touches on the simple things in life that are enjoyable. You know, your childhood, your growing up, the friends, the people that you're close with. And, I, and that, that's what's important to me. That's what I like the most about it. People carry on.
I just think it's a beautiful story. It's simply told, very heartfelt and entertaining. It's something that won't be forgotten very soon.